G'day guys, welcome to My Blue Heaven um, and a review of last night's game against the Bombrays at the MCG and uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm feeling pretty good to be perfectly honest, um, just taking the emotion out of, uh, out of these reviews moving forward, um, geez, a lot of a lot of Carlton supporters fucking feeling sorry for themselves, um, taking it personally. Anyway, um, I must say, I was really impressed with the uh, with the way Essendon played last night, and that's not. I suppose that's not shying away from how poor we are as a football team and how poorly coached we are. Um, but gee, they were impressive in a really, I suppose, understated manner. I think they're, I think what's really clear to me regarding Essendon is they know exactly where they're at. Um, they're not necessarily getting too far ahead of themselves. They know that there'll be some speed humps along the way, but they just played a really attractive and efficient brand of football. And yeah, they turned the ball over at times and they gave us some looks, but when the game was there to be won and at half time they reset and changed a few things up, they played, they played a incredible um, attacking and attractive brand of football that essentially was really hard of the contest to start with, but what they were able to do on the counter-attack and they were able to do with the ball in their possession um, from the centre of the ground and their efficiency inside 50 in that patch was, yeah, really impressive. So hats off to them. Um, and I uh, I enjoyed watching them play. I really did. Um, and that might seem funny from a Carlton perspective, but that's just where I'm at at the moment. Um, steadfast in the fact that I feel is out of his depth um, and there'll be a lot of there'll be a lot of talk now that this runs a lot deeper than the coach and maybe it does you know maybe maybe there are significant problems at the football club which are greater than Michael Voss but I'm only I'm only reviewing this game on on performance and and what I saw out on the ground last night and I just saw a really disorganized football team that's lacking belief and confidence. Um, it's not necessarily that they're playing for themselves or we are playing for ourselves. It's just that it almost feels like we, we, we don't know what we're doing. Whereas Essendon, on the other hand, yeah, they exactly knew what they needed to do to win that game of football. Um, and they were under a, a, an enormous amount of pressure going into that game. And I thought probably more pressure than us. I mentioned in the preview that, you know, we're in a situation where, you know, the season had got away from us and, um, you know, I would have felt, felt a little bit cheated if we'd got over the line in that game, given, you know, we've had lots of opportunities to, resurrect our season over the last eight weeks or so and we've just not been able to do it mostly around methods and systems not necessarily about attitudes and behaviors um and i didn't leave that game last night thinking um anything different other than the bombers uh, appear to be on the right track and we're just stuck you know we're stuck in a in a rut um and we were we were out coached, out played, understand the players need to be able to execute, but we just look, as they say, we looked as confused as a cow on AstroTurf. We just uh, 
we just don't have a identifiable system. Um, and that was exposed last night. And any time that we we were proactive, it was it was almost forced. Um, even in that last quarter, and it, it was in my mind that that Voss went to to our boys at three quarter time and just let the shackles off, and it was a little bit manic and messy. And even that, even that, seemed us. Um, yeah, and I just don't know whether we know how to play that way. Um, anyway, I said I would go to the game and, and uh, watch it watch it there at the ground because you get a, a far greater perspective um, of the way we play by, by being there. Um, and I must admit the $2 pies were, were a real positive out of the night. Um, I scoffed a few of those and, and burnt the roof of my mouth uh, before the game even started. So that that uh, that wasn't great. But look, the first quarter was just sort of atypical um, of what we sort of looked like. Um, you know, I thought, you know, we all knew that go to Merritt and he sort of put the clamps on him, but it just meant that their other midfielders sort of stepped up to the mark early in the game and they won they won clearances, they won out of the middle, although I thought TDK's ruck work in the first quarter was pretty good. Didn't think he had a great game, but I thought his ruck work against Draper and Phillips at times. I know Silvani went in there. He got his hands on it. Um, we won the hit outs, but they won they won clearances, they won contested possessions. And their midfield, you know, with lesser likes really stepped up. I mean Nick Martin, I mean he's a jet. He really is. I was trying to pick up where he was actually playing. Sometimes he would start on the wing, then he would sort of drift into the midfield. Um, and he's just all class. Um, and then they had, so I thought Stringer was good early for them and Perkins, um, who went to Cripps and really did a, a, a good job on Cripps early in the game. Um, and... You know, to kick one goal in that first quarter, and I know we kicked one goal five to their two goals four, um, but, you know, you could call them missed opportunities, but it was just a sort of mess. You know, like Charlie was bombing the ball from outside 50. They were rolling through for points. It never looked like anything that had any structure about it at all. Um, you know, from an individual point of view, I thought Motlock, in the first quarter, started off really well. He looked really busy um, and lively, pushing up the ground and, and, and a bit of speed. I um, thought Saad defensively started off well, given that he was you know, getting a, a fair roasting from the Essendon supporters. Wiedering, you know, had the better matchup on, on um, uh, was it Wiedemann, uh, looked on. And I thought, you know, you know, as much as Charlie looked a little bit messy, uh, he looked dangerous, but he was getting the ball. He was getting the ball too far up the ground. Um, so you go in at quarter time um, with Essendon scoring two goals themselves. One a contested mark to Peter Wright, which should have been spoiled. Um, yeah, I mean it was a big contest. Took a big mark. Not quite sure how how a big guy like that can take a contested mark when there's a pack like that and you've got. Young and you've got Weedering coming over the back and, and a really clumsy free kick against McGovern on Langford. Um, that first quarter rested and you could see what they were trying to do. They were just, uh, you know, they almost handball happy. It was a bit like Hawthorne playing against Brisbane um, the day before. Um, they were they were using the middle of the ground. We couldn't defend that. And they, they were getting us on the fast breaks. Um Doing, you know, a couple of things all right. We were trying to use the middle of our ground the self. Um, you know, I think there was one stage, Weedering took a mark on the uh, southern stand side wing. It was an intercept grab. Um, went inboard, which was the kick we want. And we were in a really perfect opportunity, I think it might have even been Saad that Weedering kicked the ball to in the middle of the ground in that first quarter. And instead of having the opportunity to to go inside forward 50 in that really proactive part of the ground, we decided to go 
And I know I know Akers had kept his width, but he went wide with a sort of big high kick, which Akers had to get under, and he got the ball in space on the wing. Um, and then he just had no idea what to do with the ball going inside forward 50, kicked to a one-on-one, -on -one, um, spoiled, and then they transitioned from their D50. And that happened a couple of times in that first quarter where we found the middle of the ground, but we just went wide. And I don't know if that's instruction or a lack of confidence, but yeah, it just... Essendon were, were willing to really use that corridor and, and, and get the ball forward at any cost, whereas we we found the middle and then went wide, um, almost looking for the fat side of the ground. But was it our inability of our, of our big forwards to really hit up and create separation from their direct opponents? I'm not quite sure, but, yeah, there was just a lack of synergy. Um, between our mids and our forwards once again. Then the, the second quarter rolled along. Um, and no doubt this was our best quarter in regards to winning the ball at the source. Thought we got on top around the ball. I thought Cheru was huge in that second quarter and he almost carried the team on his back. Worked really, really hard. Um, but the amount of sort of dominance we had inside forward 50, I think it was 18 to 7 in that second quarter. Um, and we only kicked two goals, and they were both from free kicks, one to Martin and one to Harry. Uh, one come from a D50 transition, um, and that was, I think, the big contest on the wing. Um, it may have come from a drop mark by Essendon deep in their forward line, which would have resulted in a goal to them. Um, so we got lucky. Um, but there was a big acres contest on the wing. Built, uh, ball spilled out. Uh, went in board, which was good. Error um, got on the end of it and then kicked inside forward 50 and we got a free kick to Martin, goal, and then another free kick to Harry. And that was from a forward half turnover. Um, good contest by TDK in the middle of the ground. And once again, Chera, who was big in that second quarter, um, we won a free kick and, and Harry scored. But, you know, we, we, we left a bit out there, but the points were messy. They were all messy. Um and on the other side of the ledger, Essendon just sort of stayed in the game. You know, they uh, Snelling Mark um, from a, a centre clearance, um, really, really slack defending. I think that was from possibly Cottrell from memory. And then uh, Wright won a free kick against Young, who had his hands full for most of the night. Um, and they just had their nose in it at half time. And Look, I didn't go to the halftime break thinking we were out of the game. Um, it was probably anything but, to be perfectly honest. Um, but we were messy. And it almost felt like it was just going to be a win that was that was going to be a bit of a grind if we were going to get the chocolates. But, yeah, I mean, that, that came in a patch... And I know they kicked seven in the third quarter, the Bombers, but that 10-minute patch um, where they kicked four goals was was as good as footy I've seen from a team that we've played against this year. Um, and I know Adelaide did a number on us in the first quarter at the Adelaide Oval. Um, but the Bombers just reset at half time. They, they identified that they needed to win the, the, the ball at the source. They backed their, their young mids um, and also Stringer in that um, in that third quarter and they just dominated um, with speed, with aggression. We couldn't lay a hand on them. Um, they took the game on and they just, they just made the most of their opportunities. Every time the ball went inside 450, they looked dangerous. Uh, it was symbolic that um, Zach Merritt, who who hadn't had any influence in the first half, went forward. Great move by Brad Scott to put Zach Merritt forward. I mean, it's it's a simple move, but it worked. Uh, Merritt scored the first goal of that third quarter. And then, uh, then it just, I don't know, it was like Ed was just rendered useless after that. He tried to go to Stringer, but Stringer just completely torched him. And then, I think at one stage there, he got stuck in a 
Jim Cotter, who was playing on um, who was playing on merit, who was having an influence. And um, yeah, I just I just felt that we just got it wrong. Um, I just think we went in the halftime thinking that we were doing a hell of a lot right, which, yeah, I think winning at the source is one thing, and that's just one part of the game. But Essendon knew that all they had to do really was be a little bit more aggressive at the contest because they knew they'd be able to get us on the outside with their forward handball, and, and, it, and it panned out that way. And they they played they played out of their skin for for that third quarter and um yeah the game was over the game was virtually over in 10 minutes um and i know you know we we scored a couple of goals in that second quarter as well um one at the 20 minute mark with a charlie kerno snap from a turnover and then the oe's mark i think it was one not many marks inside forward 50 from a center clearance um but it never felt like we were in it at any stage uh, through that through that third quarter, um, and they just got some incredible run from their back half. Redmond, Hine, um, they're well organised uh, defensively, undermanned, undersized, but just just on the same page. Uh, yeah, and uh, three quarter time, game was over. Felt like it was over. Um, we dominated the first part of that last quarter, but it was a mess. Um, could not score. Charlie kicks a snap. Yeah. Then a, then a really poor 50-metre penalty against Charlie, which released the pressure. Typical, atypical of us. And then we were just manic with our handball, and we were turning the ball over in, in really sort of really dangerous parts of the ground. Um, uh, and they, they just kept, they just kept hunting us and as decent teams do, they just really never allowed us to get back into the game, uh, with any real purpose and their forward half pressure in that last quarter when they could have, I suppose, taken the foot off the uh, pedal a little bit. Um, they were able to score two goals um, from both incorrect disposals, one to Jai Menzi, who I thought was good, and one to Cordwell, who I thought was good as well uh, for the Bombers against, I think it may have been against Brady Kemp. I thought I thought battled the game out quite well and was one of, I suppose, from an individual perspective, one of the positives for our, for our club last night. But um, pretty much the same old folks. Um, yeah, uh, and uh, and as I said at the start of this, of the start of this preview, I left. Um, I was saying I I, I wasn't disappointed, um, but I'm very much very much realistic to to where we're at, and uh, you know I, I didn't leave there thinking that was just on the players. I'm just thinking that that was just a, a really poorly coached football team and we were out, out coached when it was really mattered. And, and, and Essendon, for their, their deficiencies they may have in the early part of their, of their, I suppose, reset with Brad Scott at the helm, they, um, they're doing it in a really sort of, a really understated way. They're not getting too far ahead of themselves. Um, they work really hard for each other. Um, and if I was one of their supporters, I'd be absolutely wrapped with where they're at at the moment. They've got some some really hardworking youngsters through the middle of the ground, which I thought I thought that that was the most impressive thing from their perspective, considering there was no Shield and no Parish and no Setterfield. Um, and I didn't feel like Phillips and Draper were were you know they were okay. But they got they got so much so much from you know Hobbs and Perkins and Martin and Stringer at the start of that third quarter was just dynamite. Um, he was aggressive and antagonistic and yeah and 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 we're just a, a shell of a football team, um, a shell of a team. So roll on. We roll on to the Gold Coast Suns um, next week to see how this goes. But um, 
listening to, to Michael Voss's press conference after the game, he seems very, very confident, um, I suppose, with this team's ability to turn that around. Um, not only comfortable, but he also feels in his tone comfortable that he's going to be around to see out his contract. And there's nothing, there's nothing us fans can do about that. Um, I'll continue to, to review these games. Um, and at the moment, this is a uh, this is a team, from my point of view, that that that's being poorly, poorly set up and poorly coached. Um, and you can see it. You can see it in the players. You really can. Um, and like Essendon, you know, like they've got their deficiencies. We've got our deficiencies, personnel wise. But you make you make the most of what you've got. And no one can tell me otherwise. Um, this team, this group of players shouldn't be performing better as a group than what they are producing um, at this point of the season. Speak soon.